If you'd like to play with me, you'd better be sure you know the game. Let's have some real fun. Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. This guide's going to cover and explain the mid laner Ari. First up, let's cover the basic pretexts. Auto attack range 550, main damage orientation is AP, resource mana, main role is mid lane and overall skill cap is medium. Runes, there are two main rune setups, the first one is seen below is versus AP. The second rune setup as seen below is versus AD, it's exactly the same as before except we get armor yellows. This is a pretty standard AP rune page for Ari. Masteries. There are two main mastery sets as seen below. The first, this is pretty much normal, it runs in utility and gives us some mana which Ari really does need early game before she gets her first mana item. The second order, also as seen below, this is for a more safer orientated lane. I advise this order versus lanes you're not doing very well versus, counter lanes and all in very bursty base lanes. It gives us a defensive setup, some nice HP, some defenses and overall helps us survive the laning phase a little bit more. So use the first one versus most lanes you're okay with and the second one versus lanes you're a little bit scared of. Summoner spells. These are the viable summoner spells as seen below. You're going to want to pick up Flash for its mobility. This goes basically for every mid laner in the game. From here you have a choice. Either pick up Heal or Barrier for a middle ground defensive and combat spell if you're slightly scared of your enemy laner's burst. In addition it's also a middle ground spell for its offensive and defensive uses which means it also gives you all in potential and allows you to you know, use your kit more fluidly. From here, if you want, you can go aggressive if you wish to kill someone with heavy kill potential. If you want this, pick up Ignite. It increases your burst damage at level 6 and it usually gets you a level 6 parse by kill. If versus a sustained base laner like a Swain for example, you can pick up Ignite as well. Overall, I generally advise Flash, Ignite versus most average lanes. If versus a bully or bursty base laner, grab Barrier or Heal. Simples. Lanes to pick Ari versus. These are lanes that Ari will generally have a decent to strong laning phase versus. They are not free wins, but you do have advantages over them. Ixaroth. Sparky Sparky Boom Man is fully 100% skill shot orientated. Once you get level 6, you can outplay this guy to a hell of a degree. You can outplay every single piece of his skill shot orientated kit. If he can't land skill shots, he is useless. Versus such a highly mobile champion, uh, this can be devastating for any Xeroth, even a good one. Pre-level 6, uh, he can do quite well. You can use your Q for the movement speed burst to avoid even more skill shots during the laning phase. He is a mobile as well, so Ari can choose any engagements he wishes and break the gap of his usual long range snipe tactics. So overall, it's a pretty good lane to be versus. Orianna, her ball placement is everything. A single ulti charge will outplay her ball placement, so if she Qs to you, you can dash, she can't hit her ultimate or W until the Q comes back off cooldown, or in case she shields herself, but even then, it's not placed to hurt you. Her kit is strong, but too rigid versus such a fluid champion. She is also a mobile, so she can't run away or even catch Ari. Karthus, exactly the same as before, he can't really land anything once you get your level 6 and he's completely immobile, this leaves Ari with a lot of outplay potential, she can just jump in, ultimate, burst him down and kill him and there's nothing he can do versus this, he can't avoid her kit, he can't outpush her, he can't burst her down, he can't hit any skill shots beside his ultimate which isn't even a skill shot, overall this is pretty devastating for a Karthus. Katarina, she has very weak start game which leaves Ari with a very easy start game laning phase. This means you can simply free farm if you choose to and even kill her. At level 6 you can uh, charm to cancel her ultimate or if you miss this just simply ultimate away. If you remove her ability to dive and ultimate you, she's pretty much useless so Ari makes this so. Brand, he is almost completely combo oriented and 50% skill shot based. If you can avoid his stun, his first skill shot, and the land share of his damage, which is his pillar of flames, his second skill shot, you can nullify pretty much more than half of this guy's kit. Uh, it should be relatively easy to outplay this guy as you do have also superior range, so it should be a very easy matchup for you and at level 6, all in him, outplay his kit and you should have an easy kill. Azir, pretty much exactly the same as Orianna, he is placement orientated and requires you not to have heavy mobility to outplay his soldier placement, so basically when he throws a soldier at you, just dash over them and he can't do anything at all, so it should be a relatively easy matchup, pre-level 6 is a little bit difficult, but at 6 you should have an easy enough time. 
Velkos. This guy is fully skill shot orientated and combo orientated. If you outplay his knockup, you can outplay all of his kit. If he ultimates, simply dash behind his model and he can't turn in time. You outplay this guy's kit so severely. In addition, he is immobile and you can pick and choose when you engage upon him. Your all in potential generally is 10 times higher than his because if he can't land skill shots, he can't kill you. Uh, he's generally cannon fodder versus an Ari. Lux. She can't punish you pre level 6, she's skill shot orientated, she's immobile, you're getting the picture. Overall, anyone who relies on skill shots is cannon fodder for Ari, as she can simply use her ultimate to outplay it all. Pre level 6, it's not so much of a case, but for the most part, she's a solid lilling phase, so I only really consider these matchups level 6 plus. Also, she benefits from being anyone who can't easily lock her down, so she can't, they can't nullify her ultimate. All of these champions are as such. Lanes to avoid, Ari does not count to these lanes completely, she can still lose, she just has a higher chance to win versus these lanes. LeBlanc, her bully potential in lane leaves Ari under a lot of pressure early game. Her burst and mobility pre level 6 outclass you in every single way. The only way to deal versus this lane is landing a charm during her W dash, but even then this is kind of hard versus a good LeBlanc jumping at an angle. Swain. You could do literally nothing versus this guy pre level 6, he'll walk up and burst you down with almost lackadaisical ease. Once level 6 hits, you still can't do much. You have to go in to deal damage to this guy. Most of his abilities are on click and uh, he only has one skill shot, which means you just can't outplay most of his kit, which you know that nullifies Ari almost completely. He will hit you regardless of how mobile you are, assuming you're within range. Lastly, he's too tanky for you to burst down anyway and is greater sustain than you. Yasuo. At all points in the game, he can now play your largely skill shot oriented kit as well. Ari is skill shot based herself, so she can be countered by her own strength, heavy mobility. During the lane, you can't punish Yasuo too much, and his wind wall blocks most of your kit, a pretty disastrous matchup. Diana. Most of the time, Sokka's girlfriend will build Abyssal Scepter first. This will make her feel like a full blown tank. Uh, you will not be able to kill her without a good 5-6 rotation of all of your abilities, which isn't going to happen. Her all-in potential is uh, a largely on-click abilities, means she can't really outplay her kit either. Uh, her double dash, if she lands that Q, also makes her nearly as mobile as you. And if you can't kill her and she all ends you, you see the picture, um, you're just going to lose. The moon is brighter than your fire in this case. Talon. All this guy has to do is wait for you to use an ability and mainly your E and all he'll do is all in and burst you down. If you ult you away, he'll simply wait until you come back and do it again. This time you won't be able to get away. This guy's blink mobility means he can avoid most of your skill shots if you use any. In addition, his invisibility when he all ends you means he can outplay all of your skill shots. And your W and ultimate require vision so when he goes in invisible, you have no abilities to hit him with. He forces you to rush a defensive item, which also isn't great for Ari. Syndra. Pre level 6, she can bully you quite heavily. She has range and pick potential. At level 6, she can start to outplay her kit heavily, but the real issue is pre level 6. I generally avoid this as she can deny you and punish you really heavily pre level 6. And even if you get your level 6, you're still going to be in trouble. You can start outplaying her, but it's not that much. Malzahar. You can avoid around half of his kit, but his on click damage and push potential pre level 6 puts you under turret almost indefinitely. At level 6, the pain begins. If you ulti and try to outplay him, he'll just walk up and throw down his kit and ulti you, which can't be missed as it's on click and it's got a good range. This on click ultimate single handedly will destroy you all game. Even mid game, he'll just ultimate you and he'll lock you down for your team, his team just to destroy you. Your weakness is being locked down. This guy facilitates this in an extreme way. Annie. All of her kit is either on hit or instantaneous cast, which really can't be outplayed by your dash. She can lock you down at all points in the game and, her, and mobility can't really outplay her. Anytime you get within a range, she'll just blow you up. Lastly, she can 100 to 0 you with a single rotation of her abilities if you don't get a defensive item. Scary stuff. Cast it in pre level 6, you're fine. At level 6 onwards, he'll ultimate inside uh, of your champion model and just burst you down. He will force trades inside minions, you won't be able to do much. If you all in him, he'll just ex either escape with his greater uh, longevity based ultimate, or he'll just all in you and it'll be a close fight regardless. If you lose, he has more ultimates than you, which means after you burn the ultimate each, he'll just keep on jumping in. Once you lose your mobility, you're gone. 
Akali. Pre-level 6, it's kind of a stalemate. At level 6 onwards, you're going to start having trouble. She has a greater all-in potential and nearly equal mobility. She'll simply jump in and outburst you, and there's nothing you can really do about it. Once she bubbles, she'll also have trouble landing skill shots. Most importantly, her most of her abilities are on click, which means your mobility is just it's pointless. Like she'll just jump on you. She, there's nothing to outplay with her. She'll just with the simplicity of a hammer, she'll just go and smash you to pieces, and there's nothing you can do. Rise. Ari really can't punish a rise early enough or hard enough which most players would agree with, his on-click W will lock Ari down. This alone makes him one of the most horrible matchups in the game. Start game will have an easy time, but once mid game hits, Ryze will simply walk up to you, root you so you can't use your mobility, and he'll burst you down. This will also set up his entire team to kill you. Any on-click lockdown is pretty much a disaster for Ari to be versus. This is the start of the kind of meh lane, like you will do okay in the laning phase, but late game, this guy will just destroy your soul. Leveling order, there is basically one main leveling order that 99% of Ares will be getting, as it's basically her most effective order. This order, as seen below, gets our Q first, as it's our early damage and push tool. From here we grab our E next for its early setup and resistance to a low uh, early level gank. This also gets our CC which sets up our Q and just makes us a lot safer and it's a lot more of a sure damage. From here we get our W. Overall though, max your Q is it's your main damage source, then your W is it's your secondary biggest damage source, then your E. As we just want the base CC of it and it doesn't really matter if we scale it up too much. And finally, as always, get your ultimate anytime you can. A very, very standardized order. Ari's passive Essence Thief. Whenever Ari hits an enemy with one of her abilities, she gains a charge of Essence Thief. She can gain up to 3 charges per ability cast. Upon reaching 9 charges, Ari's next ability will heal her for 2, plus Ari's level, plus 9% for each enemy hit. Uses and Tips Number 1. Once maximum stacks are obtained, this ability will turn Ari's orb on her hand visually green, as an indicator that it's ready. Number 2. Your Essence Thief will get a proc and be proc'd and obtained off any target in existence. Enemy champions, minions, jungle monsters, pets, clones, basically if you can hit it, you can get a proc off it. Number 3. Basic point. This is your sustain to keep yourself in lane. This is actually uh, one of Ari's very important points. You have to constantly sustain in lane and it kind of makes Ari a sustain based mid laner. To a small degree, use this to sustain yourself through poke and damage all game and use it to keep in your lane as long as possible. A very basic but a very important point. Number 4, Ari's Essence Thief can allow Ari to be one of the few mid laners that can get the mid lane camps without too much punishment. If you get the jungle camps, you can use a single one of your AoE spells and get free spell vamp to get this much needed gold and experience boost for nearly free. Most of the mid laners will take too much damage and punishment in this endeavour, whereas a free spell vamp based champion like Ari can actually take these camps without much or too much loss in her HP. Number 5, now a neat little trick, Ari can get her passive over jungle camp walls. This is most notary when applied to the raptor birds in the mid lane. You can simply run back and queue over the wall to get a couple of free stacks as shown below with complete safety. I can't explain how useful this point is. When you're low and you can't spell vamp, just queue over the wall. This can get you free spell vamp or get you some stacks. Or even if you want to get this passive before a fight and your weave is pushed, basically any time you're in a bad position, just go get the passive over the wall and you don't even have to waste any time. This is a very helpful point to ensure you have this passive up as much as possible. You can use this point all over the game when running, roaming, just get drive by stacks anytime you can in the jungle but mainly in the laning phase get over the raptor wall. Number 6, this passive can be achieved multiple times throughout a big fight. Ari is a heavily skill shot orientated champion. This passive even further extends this point. If you don't hit skill shots, you're not procking this passive. If you're not procking this passive, you're not using the passive. If you're not using the passive, you don't have as much theoretical health. This will help you survive team fights if you land all those skill shots. Number 7, if ever planning upon all inning, always attempt to prerequisite this by getting as many stacks as possible, if not, just the straight up ability. This allows you to get some HP back during the fight, increasing your chance of success before any all in get this passive, or at least as much stacks as possible. Number 8, because of the nature of this ability, this means if you miss skill shots, you're ruining the potential of this passive. Missing skill shots is heavily punished with this ability. Again, as I, I just said it previously, I just want to emphasize it, ensure you hit these skill shots. 
Number nine, always try and utilize this heal in the most effective fashion. This is be very conscious of when you use which ability with this passive. Always use the best ability to spell vamp effectively with it. This is the most important point I can mention on this ability. I'll get into the most effective uses now. Number 10, this ability is most effective versus minion waves during the laning phase. As the minion wave is a line of easily hit targets, it can it allows you to easily proc the spell vamp very effectively. Basically, try and spell vamp off clumped enemies and minions for the most effective heal as it can hit a large amount of targets with one ability. Anytime there's a clumped set of anything, your Q is your most effective spell vamp based ability. Number 11, the best heal versus a single target enemy is your W. This is due to a few things. The first is that each of the three spectral flames count as a single target ability, hence apply a 35% spell vamp each, meaning the heal can be massive for this ability. The second is that you can apply this 35% three times. Number 12, avoid using this passive on charm. The reason is simple, a single 35% spell vamp heal on a low damage based ability just isn't as effective as if you used another ability. Number 13, due to the free spell vamp Ari obtains, she's one of the few mid laners who can stall minion waves. If you stand in front of the minion wave before it goes under your turret for example, hold a wave. Literally just tank the damage and then once your wave comes, walk back. From here, use your passive to take the HP back for a free-ish stall. Number 14, now an amazing point. You can use this passive to scout bushes in the fog of war uh, in correlation with your Q and E. When an enemy is hit with one of your abilities, you gain an increment of your passive uh, number on the bottom of your screen. For example, if I cast the Q in a bush and I get an extra passive mark, I know someone's there because I got a passive mark from hitting a target. Basically, use your passive with your Q and E to scout bushes all game. You should never get caught face checking Azari. Number 15, the previous point also includes scouting jungle camps. If you cast your Q over the blue wall and you get stacks, the blue is there. Same for the Baron, Dragon and any other jungle camp you can think of. One last quick little cover on how to use this ability correctly and when to use which ability to maximize your heal. Number 1, anytime you versus clumped enemies, use the Q as it, it does AoE damage and lots of it, so you'll get a lot of heals. Number two, versus single targets, use your W as it provides a 35% heal three times. So uh, this is, I'm, I apologize for reiterating too much, but this is very important. Ensure when you have this passive, you use it correctly, depending on the situation. Ari's Q, Orb of Deception, active. Ari sends an orb of arcane energy in a targeted direction, dealing magical damage to every enemy it passes through then pulls it back to yourself, dealing true damage on the way back. While the orb is travelling, Ari gains 215 movement speed, rapidly decaying down to 80 over 0.5 seconds. Ability range, 880. Uses and tips. Number 1. Spell shields will block a single instance of the damage. Number 2. Spell vampers are just to one third effectiveness. Number 3. Valley's Crystal Scepter will apply 15% slow. <laughs> Number 4. This ability is considered to be a projectile for unbreakable and wind wall. Number 5. If Ari dies or becomes untargetable before the projectile changes direction, it will fizzle upon reaching maximum range. Number 6. The projectile can only damage an enemy twice, once before it reaches and once when it comes back. Number 7. Try and hit your enemy with just the tip. Just the tip of this ability. Uh, just the tip to the Archer fans, anyone? No, just me. So basically the reason for this is to ensure that both procs will occur simultaneously. The base damage and the true damage. The turn direction, if hit on the tip, will immediately transcend. So you'll hit with the magic damage, it will turn within like 3 or 4 pixels, and it will do the true damage. So if you hit them at the end of the projectile, it will occur immediately, both stacks will occur immediately. Meaning that you'll damage your enemy with both aspects and they can't avoid it. While harassing, do be very mindful of the range of this ability and try and hit them with the tail end of it, or just the tip. Number 8, Orb of Deception's true damage is a good reason to why Ari is actually kind of decent versus tanks. She isn't a tank killer per se, but she does do decent true damage which really can't help. Number 9, on epic 420 blaze at point, you can reposition the return of your Orb of Deception with Flash or of course your ultimate. Your Q is a boomerang based skill shot, so if an enemy jukes it to the left, they can potentially avoid this ability, the return aspect anyway. If you reposition with your ultimate, it will return to your champion model, still hitting the enemy. You can reposition the Q return. This is more of a higher level tactic but still very effective to ensure you hit both aspects of your Q. 
Number 10, this ability's Geo Aspect with base magic damage and more importantly true damage makes it amazing at stealing monster objectives, which are mainly Baron and Dragon. Number 11, your Q is the best for the previously mentioned stack your passive over the wall point, as it requires no vision and of course can hit multiple enemies at once. Number 12, this is your bread and butter harassment and poke tool. The range and base damage of this ability makes it perfect to damage your enemy throughout the laning phase. This is what you should be using to wilt them down slowly. Number 13, the pure range and damage of this ability makes it perfect for clearing minion waves. This is again as your main minion wave clearing tool. Number 4, Orb of Deception is really good at getting unsafe CS. Long range, good damage makes this ability perfect. Number 15, Orb of Deception's return hit is far more important than its original magic damage. True damage is always a point you want to get over the normal magic damage. Try and hit both aspects, of course, I'm not saying avoid one, but if you have to choose, hit the true damage. Number 16, this ability actually has a slightly higher range than its indicator. Well, indicates. <laughs> not many people use indicators, but hell, I just wanted to mention it. Number 17, the most effective way of setting up your Q double aspect is with your E. Landing both aspects of your Q is difficult, so if you save that Q for when you land your E, you'll land both aspects. Your charm is the best chance for a double successful hit. Remember when they're charmed, they're stuck in a single spot, which means the both the forward shooting Q and the back pull will all be hit because they can't move and juke it. Number 18, Orb of Deception provides you with a decent movement speed burst. This can be used to run away from enemies, avoid skill shots, get to lean faster, it really helps by casting this walking out of the fountain and once going to lean. I, I really want to emphasize that really helps to get you back way faster. You can also use it to chase enemies, kite. The animation does take a small time but the movement speed more than makes up for it and is 100% worth casting to get a movement speed boost. These are the main uses for the movement speed boost but it's very versatile and sure you think outside the box and any time you need movement speed, use this ability. Number 19, now a very important and very useful point. Your Q's animation can be cancelled by flash. You can use it with flash to essentially extend the range of this ability and cancel the long animation and catch your enemy by surprise basically. This is done by using your Q and waiting for about 0.2 seconds. So during the animation after this, cast flash and it will cancel the animation. This is done more effectively than using flash, then stopping and then using your Q animation. Doing this trick extends the range of orb by about 425, your flash range, and the spell goes off instantly. This is a very important trick if you want to surprise your enemy for a Q or to all in or finish them off. This is a very, very high level tactic. A lot of people, well it's not like next level, but it's hard to pull off in a successful, consistent basis. So I do advise heavily practicing this, but when you do, you will not regret it. Ari's W Foxfire active. Ari summons three spectral flames, which orbit around her for up to five seconds. After a brief delay, each flame will target the closest visible enemy prioritizing enemy champions, then the target of Ari's last basic attack, dealing magical damage upon hit. Multiple flames can hit a single target, but each flame beyond the first will only deal 30% damage. Ability range, 550. Uses and tips. Number 1, spell shields will block a single flame. Number 2, spell vamp is fully applied. This is a very notable point when associated to your passive, so remember it. This ability heals a lot versus single targets. It applies a full heal three times, so it's very effective. Number 3, Rally's Crystal Scepter will apply a 35% slow for each flame. Number 4, this ability is considered to be a projectile for Unbreakable and Wind Wall. Number 5, Foxfire has no casting time and will not interrupt Ari's previous orders. During Flash, your Ultimate, your E, your Q, your Run animation, you can cast Firefox for no time at all. This makes this ability very castable and very useful without worrying about animation cancel interrupts or the animation time and running away for example, it's very effective. Number 6, the cooldown of Foxfire begins once all orbs have been cast or timed out. This can make it a very good incentive to actively use all of the ability flames quickly to get the cooldown off as long as possible. I see people running around with the flames on them and it's like, you're wasting cooldown time with one flame, don't do it. You know, so basically, use your flames immediately so the cooldown gets up, if you ever can, of course. Number seven, Ari must have sight of an enemy in order for Foxfire to target them. Once targeted, the missiles will chase its target even if Ari loses sight. Number 8, if the target of Foxfire dies, the missile will just fizzle. Number 9, any unused Foxfires will fizzle on Ari's death. 
Number 10, if Aru uses Zonya's Arglass while Foxfire is active, any orbs that have not acquired a target will fizzle. This means that Zonya's essentially can kind of destroy this ability, so be very, very careful with it. Number 11, your W prioritizes champions automatically, so if they're within range, it will work and immediately target them. This is a pretty substantial point. This means that this ability is very effective during the laning phase to damage an enemy over minions. Many newish Aries only use this ability outside of their minion line. This will go over minions, making it an amazing and mostly unblockable tool during the laning phase. You can basically get free damage if you just activate it within your auto attack range. Number 12, a confusing thing about this spell is that each of the three little flames have their own independent range. This means that one flame could, you know, be in range of a champion and hit the champion, while the other two flames aren't within range and hit minions instead. If you want all three flames to hit the champion, you have to be a bit closer than you think so all three flames are encompassed around a 550 range of the champion. If you move after the first flame is hit, you could potentially miss the other two. So this means this ability does have a 550 range, but the flame itself has to be within 550 units. So you actually have to technically be around 400 range for all of the flames to hit. This makes this ability kind of risky to pull off and Rad intended it and designed it this way. Number 13, to gauge the range of this ability, Foxfire is an equal range to that of your auto attacks. So if you can auto attack, you can double E and you will be within range. Number 14, this ability is good to help push minion waves. Many Aries only use that Q, uh, but this is a bit silly. Remember that these flames uh, do a lot of single target damage, so you just should use your W in the middle of a wave so that each flame will hit a different minion. Avoid using all of your flames in a single minion like many Aries do. Uh, this is a bigger point I wanted to get into. Remember, a single target with hit with all of these flames will do reduced damage. If all uh, the targets are new targets, it'll do full damage to each target. So try and use your W in a way in between a minion wave so that the W will hit multiple minions and not just focus all upon one. So basically, don't use your W in front of the minion wave to do damage to the first creep. Walk or wait till they're bum bundled up, walk to the side and make sure the wave or flames hit at least two creeps if possible. Number 15, this ability is a godlike harassment tool. Remember this ability goes over minions, so it's perfect for a quick W barrage and run. I notice that this ability doesn't interrupt animations, so during an auto attack you can cast this ability for a very surprising W. Many people, even at higher levels, would get tricked by this, so if you auto attack a minion for example. While you're auto attacking a minion, most people assume I'm safe, I have a small window of opportunity. So they go in, and when you just activate the W during your auto attack to your minion, They'll be like, what? You know, because most people think, I'm not, you, if you use an animation, you're going to miss that creep. So most people, yeah, even at higher level, will get tricked by this quite heavily. So just auto attack minions, and then when they keep come up, just use your W. Free harassment tool. Number 16, from the previous point, this makes Foxfire pretty effective at zoning. If you activate this ability, you can easily back your enemy off of fear of getting hit. This can be used to deny CS like a siege creep if you rush at your enemy and activate this ability. They will back off the minions. Number 17, due to no animation cancels with this ability, it makes it fantastic for kiting. Simply activating this when running uh, won't slow you down with an animation and it'll simply just damage the enemy running against you. So no pesky animations to slow you down makes it perfect for kiting. One last quick little section of Foxfire's targeting priority order and it goes as follows. Number 1, the enemy champion closest to the orb's location. Number 2, the target of Ari's last auto attack. Number 3, the enemy unit closest to the orb location. And that's it. Ari's E charm active. Ari blows a kiss in the targeted direction, dealing magical damage and charming the first enemy she hits, forcing them to walk harmlessly towards Ari while slowed for 50%. Ability range 975. Yes, that's a real number. Duration 1, 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, and 2 seconds. Uses and tips. Number 1, Spell Shields will block your charm. Number 2, Spell Vamp is fully applied, but it's only a single ability, so it doesn't work amazingly with your passive. Number 3, Red Eyes Crystal Scepter will apply 35% slow, not that it matters due to the charm duration. Number 4, this ability is considered to be a projectile for Unbreakable and Wind Wall. Number 5, if the charmed enemy does not have sight of Ari, they will stand still for its duration. This means if you hit an enemy in the Fog of War, it is less effective. Effective? <laughs> effective. They'll just stand there, they're not going to move towards you, so overall try and hit them with vision. 
Uh, number six, the reduction of your enemy's movement speed is fixed for the duration. Hasting or further slowing the target will have no effect. The Highlander will also not resist it. Number seven, charm is also exceptional at checking bushes as a scouting tool. Charm at a bush and listen for the hit. Watch if it stops early, and also you can check your passive to see if it's incremented by a single point. It's better to waste the mana and no one being there than you know saving the cost of the spell and being killed. This is a very good scout tool. I just can't pronounce things today. Scout tool. There we go. <laughs> Number 8, not a big point, this is your pick tool for the entire game. A single charm can win you the game. In lane, try and land this to pull people out of position for a torrent of your abilities. This goes tenfold late game. Ari can use your charm to make a pick while sieging or just before a team fight, for example. So if their Eddie carries wave clearing and you clip them with the charm, they're going to come forward and make your team a pick. A pick that could win you the game. This is one of your most important jobs. Ari is a backline diver, she cleans up team fights, but one of your main jobs is making picks. This ability has a 975 range. It's 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 massive. You have to make picks with this ability before team fights, during the lane, uh, just strafing in between uh, skirmishes, anything. Try and make picks with this ability. Number nine, your charm is your longest range ability and only CC. Due to this, it's your best tool to catch and finish fleeing enemies. Number 10, again this is your only form of CC, which makes it one of your best kite and escape tools. Number 11, charm may be used to get unsafe, unsafe CS, only do this if you're safe under turret. Opt for your Q to complete this job a lot more effectively, you don't want to use your CC uh, to get unsafe CS during the lane as it is your only protection versus all ins, so don't use it casually, only use it if you really have to. Number 12, Ari's Charm is their only setup ability. Generally, you only want to poke with your abilities, and even then, it's kind of difficult to hit them. If you want a surefire way of hitting all of your abilities, use your E to lock down your enemy and run up with all of your abilities so they can't avoid them or retaliate. This is a massively important point. This is the most common way to get a combo off. If you're even scared of your enemy, use Charm and then use the Burst and then back off. This ability sets up all of your kit for basically free. This is a really important point. Number 13, always try and use your E and Q together to ensure you hit that second aspect of your Q. Most people can avoid the second aspect of your Q, with your E this is impossible. Number 14, landing your charm is a difficult quest to complete. To assist this quest, we can reposition Ari with her ultimate to land a charm more easily. If you want it all in, or you'll want a charm set up 100%, so jump in with your ultimate and land a charm right in their face. This can really surprise a lot of laners. Number 15, the previous tactic is a lot more common to be used in regards to ma making your E an even more effective pick tool. Many high level Aries will ultimate into an enemy even if they're a little bit out of position and use their max range of the charm to get some insane pick potential. Many people only engage the range of Aries charm as a protective zone of potential danger. You can make the, a surprise pick with your ultimate and casting your E, making the theoretical range of your ultimate and E pick to be about 1425, making this an even better fantastic surprise pick tool. This is, uh, this again, a charm can win you a team fight. so if you pull off one of these during a team fight, you will literally just win your team the entire game. Number 16, always try and use blind spots bushes to hit this skill shot if you ever can basic but important point use blind spots boy <laughs> number 17 this ability is your best chance to both set up and resist ganks the cc will slow down your enemy enough to set up a barrage of your abilities and of course slow them down from chasing you number 18 your charm is fantastic for ruining enemy combos so if a thrash pulls in uh use your e to stop him from flying a rise comes up to burst you down charm him to ruin his spell after his first original ability. Basically this can ruin a lot of enemies combos and realistically you should be using this almost versus any combo orientated champion. Number 19, your E is effective at minimizing the amount of damage taken when taking a jungle camp. So if you charm the blue for example while taking it, you can easily avoid two hits from him, saving yourself some precious HP. Number 20, Ari is a dangerous enemy near turrets. You can easily charm an enemy into your turret range if they get close enough. This tactic is heavily effective versus cocky enemies harassing you under the turret. Let them hit you then charm them under the turret for two free turret hits. Number 21, one slightly annoying thing about the way your charm works is because 
If you charm someone, they normally walk towards you. If you're on the other side of a wall and you have vision, the pathing of the game will make the character walk around to get you. So instead of them walking into the wall, they'll walk off to the side and path around to you, which can make you miss Orb of Deception or some of your abilities. Something you can do to counter this problem is by holding off your queue for a split second to see which way the pathing will take their character. Be very careful with this point. Number 22. Your Flash E extension. You can use your E with Flash to essentially extend the range of this ability and cancel the animation. This is done by using your E and then Flash trick that cancels the animation of the ability rather than using Flash then having to stop your E animation. Doing this trick extends the range of the charm by 425 and the spell goes off instantly. This is exactly the same as your Q but it's more important. This is more important because it's your CC and a pick tool. If you land your E, you can make a pick for yourself and your team. So, use your E, and about 0.25 seconds after, cast your flash. And this will extend the range of your charm and catch even the most experienced player out. This is an amazing pick. I've done this and literally just won games off it. Uh, Ezreal being cocky, E flash, dead. <laughs> no problem. So, uh, it's a very effective tactic. Please use this. This can win you a game. It can pick off even the most safe carries. Ari's R slash ultimate, Spirit Rush, active. Ari dashes in the direction of her cursor and fires up to three energy bolts to target the closest visible enemy unit within 600 range, prioritizing champions and deals magical damage upon hit. Spirit Rush can be cast two additional times within 10 seconds of activation, at no additional cost, before going on cooldown. The same enemy can only be hit once per dash. Ability range, 450. Uses and tips. Number one, spell shields will block a single instance of the damage. Number two, spell thump reduced to one third effectiveness. Number three, Rally's Crystal Scepter will apply 15% slow. Number four, this ability is considered to be a projectile for Unbreakable and Wind Wall. Number five, Spirit Rush uses Smart Cast by default. Number six, Spirit Rush uses a barrage system, which means it can be cast multiple times within a given period at no additional cost. Each activation counts as activating an ability for items such as Sheen and abilities such as Force Pulse. Number 7. Ari must have sight of an enemy in order for Spirit Rush to target them. Once targeted, the missile will chase them even if the target or Ari loses sight. Basically, this makes bushes very effective versus this ability. Number 8. If Ari dies mid-dash, she will not fire any missiles. Number 9. The range of this ability allows you to easily dash over walls. This can be good in escaping and in chasing. Number 10. Spirit Rush is god at setting up and resisting ganks. If an enemy ganks you, this ability can get you away from even the most aggressive and affecting ganking junglers. The multiple dash system makes Ari basically unkillable by a gank when it's up. On the other hand, when you're ganking, this ability can close the gap pretty heavily. One gank can use this ability right in front of your enemy's face to finish them off and set up your entire kit. Number 11, a small note, when your ultimate is on cooldown, try and play a little bit more moderately safe. Without this ability, Ari is actually quite weak to ganks and as she only has one easily missed CC. So when your ultimate's a cooldown, play it a little bit safer. Number 12, this multiple dash system makes Ari god at turret diving. You can easily dive in and do a barrage of your abilities and get out of there with another dash to spare. The mobility this ability provides can make Ari a very, very powerful turret diver. Number 13, Spirit Rush is the bane of any backline. The sheer amount of distance this ability can cover makes it fantastic at diving the enemy backline. Most casters have a lot of issues getting to the enemy backline, but this isn't the case for Ari. Ari is designed to dive on the outskirts and on top of the enemy backline to split the enemy team peeling uh, capability at least in two. Use this ability in teamfights to get to the enemy backline and this is one of Ari's main uses of this ability during teamfights. Number 14, mentioned previously, reposition your spirit rush to land a more easily achieved charm. Number 15, you can cast your W during a spirit rush dash. This can help you in achieving your maximum burst. Number 16, this ability is fantastic to reposition your Q return. If an enemy runs to the left or right, for example, you can rush to the left or right uh, depending upon which way they went, so the Q return will still hit them because you reposition with your ultimate. Previously mentioned, but very useful. Number 17, Spirit Rush is one of the most effective abilities in the game to kite and escape your enemies. Generally, you should be doing both at the same time. Ari should never just run. Her dashes mean she can play thick and fast and draw a line between dead and alive. Ensure you kite and don't just run unless you're on like 1 HP. Number 18, no one really gets away from Ari, basically no one. So use this ability to catch and finish off fleeing enemies at any point in the game. So basically, if they flash, it's never enough. 
Number 19 now a massive pinpoint aspect of this ability and why it's so effective. This ability provides massive outplay potential or potential on skill shot based and orientated champions. The large amount of multiple dashes means you can avoid basically all of an enemy's skill shot orientated kit. This is why Ari is so powerful versus skill shot based champions. Like an Xuroth has no chance versus an Ari when they all in at level 6. Her dash will just make him miss absolutely everything. How can he land skill shots in such a highly mobile target? Try and use your ultimate versus skill shot orientated champions for an easy win. Number 20, too many Aries quickly rush all of their dashes to pump out that damage. This is misplaced to a large degree. When using this ability, pace the use of your dashes. Don't panic and use them all quickly. Ari is an opportunistic based champion. She needs to wait for openings. Save your dash for one of these openings. Don't panic and keep on smashing the R key. Wait and think. Only smash the key if you are cleaning up a team fight. That's basically it. Number 21, this ability single handedly can potentially get you 9 charge over passive itself if all of the flames hit. This ability alone can proc your passive, just a small note to take into consideration. Number 12, don't waste spirit rush dashes, please. I see many people who get the kill and uh, they just let the last dash dissipate into nothing. If you have a, da a dash left, you know, use it to push a minion wave. Get back to your turret faster, uh, dash towards an open inhib, anything, just don't waste the free charge. Combo pretext. These combos are pretty much core on Ari. Now a couple of points on Ari's casting playstyle. Many casters have varying playstyles that come in varying forms. An example is Akil who has sustained caster style, in which she provides damage over long periods of trades, uh, so she ensures she gets her E damage off over a long period of time, as it requires her to auto attack for a long period of time. Whereas someone like a Vegar will use all of his abilities in one go and have nothing left. So now I'll cover Ari's caster playstyle. Ari's caster style is burst. This basically means Ari wants quick burst damage with her, you know, E, W, Q combo and get the hell out of there immediately after. Ari has limited sustained damage beyond her auto attacks, with the exception of course being her ultimate charges, but even then I consider it a part of her burst. So basically when Ari fires out all of her abilities, just run. Do not stay around to continue on the fight after your burst. Wait and go back for cooldowns before coming back to try and do some damage or in regards to your ultimate dash away, wait for your cooldowns and dash back. This is actually a very important concept, ensure you use all of your damage in quick combos and quick succession uh, in all of the combos I'm about to cover. One quick point before I get into this is that I will be using uh, Ari's passive icon for her auto attacks. Zone combos, zone combo number 1, threat of your E and Q. Your ability projectiles, mainly your E and Q, are just constant and static threats throughout the laning phase. Even walking up to your enemy will make them think at least something's coming, and will they'll project the f you as a threat basically and just back off. Zone combo number 2, W. Once you activate your W, you'll start homing in on the closest enemy champion. Most of the enemy champions know this and will back off from fear of being hit. Run at your enemy and activate this to zone them off or back them off CS. Zone combo number 3, Ultimate. Spare casts only. If you've already used your ultimate and your enemy got clean away, save it and jump in their direction one more time. Most players can't cast, so they're going to be like, oh you've used two, you've one left. And they're going to be naturally zoned for fear of you dashing towards them. So if, even if you dash towards them after, you can heavily deny them CS because people don't want to go near an area with the spare dash, they just don't. Harass combos. Harass combo number one, auto attack. Versus melee enemies and lower auto attack based enemies, you can throw a few early auto attacks to do some dull but easily stackable damage. Ari has a mid range auto attack range of 550, that should make it relatively easy to hit lower ranged enemies and melee mid laners. Harass combo number two, Q. Now your bread and butter harassment tool, your Q has a pretty good range and a lowish cooldown. You should be using blind spots or even just in your enemy's face to hit this ability. Harass combo number 3, W. If your enemy gets within a 550 range, use your W and it will hone in on them and do some very clean harassment over minions. Harass combo number 4, E, Q. Begin with your E to lock down your enemy. From here, Q and back off so that both aspects will hit this ability and you get away cleanly. Harass combo number 5, E, W, auto attack. Commence with your E to lock down your enemy. While this is happening, W and auto attack once and then back off. While your enemy is under the influence of charm, you should be backing off to ensure you remain safe and this is actual harassment and you're not making a trade. Harass combo number 6, E, W, Q. This is your bread and butter heavy harassment combo, you'll be using this very commonly. 
Commence again with your E to lock down your enemy. Once they're locked down, cast your W, because uh, there's no real cast animation, and then throw your Q so you can't miss the double aspect of your Q. If you're feeling cocky, use an auto attack once and then back off, but this is optional, I do want to emphasize. EWQ and backing off is a lot more common. This is the combo you'll be using pretty much most of the game anytime you land a charm. Trade combos. Ari shouldn't be trading too much, she's okay at it, assuming you land charm, but uh, try and avoid them. These are sort of counter trade combos. Uh, just generally try and just hit them with charm and poke more. Uh, your all in potential is good, but not the best, so be apprehensive about doing this. Basically, I would summarize these combos as cover fire combos. Ari has to burst and run and not straight up trade with her enemy. Trade combo number one, auto attack, Q. Auto attack once and then back off and throw that Q behind you. You'll get the movement speed to help get away and if they continue chasing you, they're gonna get hit by the second Q aspect. Remember, if they keep on following your champion model, your Q will follow and they'll get hit by the true damage. Most people will juke to the right to avoid this or the left and of course this means they can't chase you due to this. This is your relatively cheap counter trade combo. Trade combo number two, E, auto attack, Q. So immediately uh, start off with that E, auto attack while they're under the influence and throw your Q to get the movement speed and harassment and then back off. Trade combo number three, E, Q, auto attack. Basically the same combo as before except we throw auto attack after. Now this leaves us at more risk because we're at the 550 range when we're using our auto attack, but it ensures we hit the Q. So basically when we hit the charm and we Q immediately, we're going to hit both aspects. Whereas we E and then auto attack and then Q, that means that we used an auto attack time where we should have been using our Q and the charm will go off so the second aspect of the Q can be avoided. I personally like this combo as it assures you land the double Q aspect damage, even if it comes with a little bit more risk. Tree combo number 4, E, W, Q. Cast your charm and activate the W for the damage when your enemy is locked down during the cast. During this, cast your Q for the double damage. Your W has no cast time and won't get in the way, but will take about half a second to repair the cast, so make sure you activate it before you use your Q, because you might as well charge it up. It does take some time to repair. All in combos. All in combo number one, auto attack, E, Q, auto attack. Begin with the auto attack from here, lead it with the E, and while they're charmed, use your Q for the double aspect. Finally, auto attack until your enemy dies. This is a very early call all in combo. All in combo number two, auto attack, E, W, Q, auto attack. Auto attack and then E, from here, cast that W uh, early, just so the clock time does go up, and then Q immediately after this for the double Q aspect. Then auto attack and hope. All in combo number three, auto attack, E, W, Q, ultimate auto attack. Auto attack and then E immediately. From here, cast the W and your Q for the double aspect. Then ultimate to get into your enemy's face. Auto attack in between ultimate casts, and then just wait for the rest of your abilities, and hope that's enough. Wave clear combos. As a mid laner, it's nearly always your job to clear mini waves quickly and effectively. This is a massive section, especially on a moderate wave clear champion like Ari. You have to know how to clear waves perfectly to play basically any champion. This goes tenfold for mid laners and a hundredfold for wave clear champions like Ari, who have a powerful, if not very powerful, wave clear potential. Wave clear combo number one Q, W, position correctly auto attack. So begin this combo uh, to queue the entire weave while they're lined up. From here auto attack and activate your W so that it hits a spread. Basically try to walk in between two or three minions so that your W will hit multiple targets so you don't get that stackable W damage. From here just keep on auto attacking and queue again if it's needed. Pre level 6 Ari's wave clear isn't amazing it's just okay. Wave clear combo number 2. Q, W the siege creep auto attack. So again, begin this combo uh, to queue the entire wave while they're lined up or if they're static, it doesn't really matter, it's the same for each. From here, run right up to the Siege Creek and activate your W so that most of the hits will still hit it. Unfortunately, you can't really use your W around too many uh, like you normally do. You have to just do the single target. The Siege is the hardest thing to kill, so generally you're going to have to do that. From here, just keep on auto attacking and you might have to use your Q again one more time. Very simplistic. We've clear combo number three. Q. Q, W. This is your clear combo uh, that's very safe to pull off. If you're ever under pressure in the mid lane, uh, do generally use this combo. So basically, when they're lined up, you should Q to try and hit the entire wave. Back off. Remember, you're being pressed. 
wait till the Q comes back off cooldown and Q again. From here, run to the middle of the wave and activate your W to finish off any low creeps, and that's pretty much it. Leaning section. This section will be a conceptual explanation of how to play arrow using the stance theory. This was covered in my mid lane guide part 1 that you should watch at 1.25 to 1.5 speed if you're a fluent English speaker. Refer to it if you haven't seen it. I'll be covering the potential ways you should be playing Ari and at what stages of the game she can be played in, the varying set of versatile playstyles depending on how you play and of course who your verse is. Let's get into it. Free level 6 playstyle number 1. Farm. Pre level 6, most Aries generally just play safe and just farm. Pre level 6, just farming is probably the best thing you can do. Aries pre level 6 isn't amazing, it's okay, but it's not very strong in any way. So, just farming, just getting CS, playing passive is one of the best ways to play her. Pre level 6 playstyle, number 2 kill. In some matchups where your enemy is bad at avoiding skill shots or just weak early game, you can easily Q and W harass down your enemy. From here you can land a single E and land in your entire combo, and it will bring them down to basically 0 HP. This leaves you in a position for a flash burst combo. If you have ignite this will lead to a very early kill. This is a very common circumstance versus bad laners and weak early laners. Level 6 plus playstyle number 1 kill. At level 6 Ari gets a pretty big power spike in regards to her ultimate. This means she can easily uh, get pretty good kill potential. Even with a few Q W harassment you can easily set up yourself up with a kill. Simply ultimate and charm to reposition to set up your burst or do one of your all in combos. The slightly sustained ultimate burst late game leaves Ari with a very good all in. Level 6 plus playstyle number 2 push roam. Ari has pretty decent wave clear once she gets level 6 with her first AP item. This leaves her uh, with a good push and roam playstyle opens here. Once pushed, she can use your ultimate to roam to gank to other lanes. Once even near the lane, you can use your ultimate to stack quickly over ward placements and get to a good gank. All opened thanks to her good old wave clear and pushing ability. Level 6 plus playstyle number 3, push, farm. You can simply use your wave clear to just pretty much shove the enemy minion waves to the turret. Once here, they're going to push it back or lose CS to the turret. If they stall, go to get the raptures and wait for them to just push it to the middle. From here, shove it back and do it all again, this time with wolves. And notice you can mix and match all of these playstyles depending of course on your circumstances, which means uh, how your team's playing, uh, how the enemy team's playing, jungle, uh, how you want to play. Like These are not static playstyles, these are just the main orientated ways on how to play Ari. And that's it for the learning phase, it's up to yourself to play the best, the best playstyle suited for you and of course the playstyle is best versus your laner and for your team. Teamfight section, your role in teamfight comes in two different phases, the first is the poke pick phase, this is basically what Ari should be doing before basically any teamfight and after this she'll transcend on to the regular phase, which is just normally how to for the most part teamfight with her after the poke pick phase has been gone and after the teamfight has officially started. So let's get into it. Poke pick phase. Before the fight starts, the range of your Q allows you to do some decent poke to the enemy. While you're doing this, your E has a similar range. You should be looking for any enemy carry to get charmed, or more commonly, an ulti charm distance away. If an enemy carry gets out of range, uh, just try to overextend to push a minion wave, for example, use your ultimate and E, or just your E in some cases, to get them and pull them into your team. You can make a pick, and this single handedly, I've caught carries doing this, I've caught enemy mid laners doing this. Oh, I, I'm Ziggs, I'm just gonna wave clear. Uh, ultimate E, caught, whole team dives on them, they have no mid laner, we win the fight. Perfect. So even if an enemy gets a little bit out of position, use that ultimate charm combo, you can pick people off very easily. You'll be surprised, see when you start doing this before a team fight, you'll be surprised at how many people don't know how to position correctly. And of course, while you're doing this, try and poke. Regular phase. So after you've gotten the poke or charmed, and uh, whether it worked or not, the team fight will go like this. Immediately cast a full barrage of your abilities into the main body of your enemy. You have to wait in team fights for Ari, so just use your abilities immediately. I see people holding their abilities and just waiting to clean up. You still have to do damage. I mean, burn your abilities up, throw them into the enemy front line, and just wait for the cooldowns from here. You're going to start seeing openings. Once you see an opening to the enemy backline, use your ultimate to position around the team fight and then start casting your abilities into the backline, trying to assassinate someone if you can. If not, this is Ari, she still does her, her job, no matter what. So even if you're ultimate to the side and you're not doing much damage, two or three people are going to peel off to deal with you, leaving your team with the rest of their team. 
which is a heavy advantage. I would argue that one of Ari's best utilities in a team fight isn't just her damage, it's not just her pick potential, it's not just her backline potential, it's the amount of effort required to deal with her. Once she's dashing around to your backline, two or three frontliners are going to break their frontline wall. And once that's broke, their backline isn't protected. A lot of people will try and deal with Ari and just use her ultimate to keep the distance and kite them out and draw as many people off away from the team fight as possible. If winning use your ultimate charges, any left, and your Q and E and W and everything to finish off any enemies you can. If losing use your whole kit to just to keep and try and get away. While running use all of your skill shots behind yourself to kite and damage your enemies while you're running. Your long range abilities means this should be an easy enough task. And remember to keep on using that Q to basically just get that movement speed to get away. And that's it for the leaning section but that's also it for the guide. I hope it helped guys, remember to like it if you like it, dislike if you dislike it, sub if you like me or unsub if you don't like the video in some cases. You can also share if you think it's good enough or know anyone that would benefit from some RE tips at all. Uh, besides that guys, as always have an absolutely great day and best of luck in the rift.